I'm Neil Ward for Kit Guru. Today is the day that AMD has dished the details on Ryzen 9 4900H, which is one of the mobile chips they didn't talk about at CES 2020. Ryzen 4000 they announced, they told us about a couple of models, and then at the tech day, which happened a few weeks ago now, they dished further information that was uh, held under embargo. Today's the day that Luke has been able to write about Ryzen 9 4900H but he hasn't yet tested it. He hasn't got his hands on the laptops. Or if he has, he hasn't told me. I'm going to say he hasn't got them. The reason is we're waiting. And the reason we're waiting, as you know, is the human malware, which is making for a very gloomy time. Essentially, we've been waiting for lots of things since CES 2020. But quite frankly, in the current situation, it seems childish. Petty? Petty. It seems petty to complain about laptop chips, if I'm entirely frank. Just to rattle through a number of the things that have happened in the past few days and weeks. Any number of shows have been cancelled. MWC in Barcelona a while back, that was cancelled. And frankly, with the, with what we now know, good. Uh, GDC and E3 have moved to uh, online events. Apple's closed all of its stores outside of China. Nike's closing stores. Movie premieres have gone back. The Bond movie's gone back months. The uh, Fast and Furious, whatever that is, number nine or something, has gone back, I think, 11 months. The Vatican has basically cancelled Easter. I mean, not quite. The uh, liturgy is going to be a digital event. So the Vatican has gone online. But when you consider this is a thing that affects people over 70 in particular, and I think every single person in the Vatican pretty much is over 70, no great surprise there. Uh, every sporting event, I mean, MotoGP, Formula One, rugby, football, terrible, terrible situation. What's going to happen with the Olympics in Tokyo? And we had various elections scheduled for uh, here, uh, the UK in May. And you have to wonder about the American election. I mean, what do they say about American politicians? They go around shaking hands and kissing babies. Well, that's all bad. And they're all over 70 as well, all the uh, contenders. So uh, I think Tulsi Gabbard's still in it, actually. Perhaps she's the good choice then. She's way under 70. Uh, so what's going to happen with the American election? I mean, nothing good. So taking all that together, how can I sit here and bitch about chips? I mean, it's ridiculous. I'm going to attempt to convey some good news, but the single biggest question mark in the year for me at the moment, and for, apart from health, which obviously is hugely important, is Computex. We do not know what's going to happen with Computex at the moment. It's in the last week of May crossing over into June. I think all the smart money says it's going to be at the very least delayed. I don't think they'll cancel Computex unless they absolutely have to. Uh, Taiwan's had problems uh, in years gone by with um, human malware and they delayed Computex rather than cancelling it. Computex, after all, is the home show for the tech industry. It's, you know, it is Taiwan. And I, I think they'll do anything they can to avoid cancelling Computex. But the idea it's going to go ahead on schedule it seems most unlikely. Uh, if the Chinese can't come from the mainland, from the PRC to the ROC, Computex would be nothing. If the Europeans can't go quite bluntly, they can do without us, sad to say, but they can. Without the Americans, wouldn't make a lot of sense. So it seems to me that the, we'll, we'll get a decision in a week or two. I think they'll delay Computex. Sad to say, but better safe than sorry. In the normal course of things, Inner Leo says, I would now proceed to lambast Intel for not supplying Cascade Lake X chips. They were launched back in November. You can't buy the big chips in the range. You can't buy the 18 core and the 14 core. If you could buy the 18 core, it would cost you £1,300 which is considerably more than it ought to be. If you look, you'll find the 12 core on sale for £700, which is hugely expensive. And Cascade Lake X, it, it, it's just been a terrible launch. Uh, months after the event, you can't buy the things. And I don't have it in me to lay in the boot. I really don't. Similarly, other rumours that have been doing the rounds recently about uh, Comet Lake S, which we were expecting at Computex. Perhaps it will still be at Computex, except maybe that'll be September or October. On 14 nanometer and some pluses. 10 cores apparently on the desktop. Uh, TDP was high. Pick a number, insert number, because the power draw was going to be... 200 watts or whatever lga 1200 socket new motherboard i'm supposed to get all grumpy about it i haven't got it in me it's just not there 
the fight has gone. And then we heard rumours just the other day about Intel 12th generation Alder Lake coming sometime after 2021. Well, obviously, I mean, 10th gen is meant to be this year. 11th gen would therefore be next year. So 12th gen, you know, whatever, who knows. Uh, but after 2021 and Alder Lake supposedly on 10 nanometer with eight big cores and eight little kind of atomy sorts of cores, presumably as a way for Intel to say, look, we've got a 16 core chip on the desktop. It makes no sense to anybody. It might be true. It might be complete fiction. Uh, what's the point in speculating? I mean, who can speculate about this year, let alone next year or the year after? Totally makes no sense to start talking about Intel 12th gen on 10 nanometer on the desktop. So I shan't do it. I will, however, say as part of my final not kicking into a while they're down. I mean, they're making fortunes, but all the companies on the stock market at the minute are in deep trouble. So just recently, George Davis, CFO, Chief Financial Officer of Intel, had a chat. They called it a fireside chat, <laughs> which is quite funny. Uh, with a chap called Joe Moore, who's a semiconductor industry analyst at Morgan Stanley, which is obviously a colossal merchant bank. Davis was quoted as saying from that, we are definitely in the 10 nanometer era. We launched Ice Lake Client at the end of last year, i.e. 2019. True, they did. We have GPUs coming out, a discrete GPU coming out this year, 2020. Well, okay then. Uh, at the end of the year, we have the server SKU coming on 10 nanometer, Ice Lake server. Uh, looking forward to seeing that. I mean, whether it's 10 core or 28 cores or 38 cores, that's going to make a big difference. We also have 10 plus coming out this year. That's 2020. I mean, really? OK. And the thing is, my inclination is just to laugh at the whole thing and say, I'll believe it when I see it. I don't have it in me. Instead, I'm going to take the positive approach. I'm going to turn to AMD for a lot of good news. AMD had a huge financial kind of briefing recently, which went on for three and a bit hours. It was at a terrible time because it was American time. So it started, I think, at 9 p.m. UK time, went through to like midnight. And they just did presentation after presentation, which was all AMD people being really upbeat. They also recently had a press release thing about uh, El Capitan, which is a supercomputer uh, that was announced last year. And they've basically given some details about what's going on with it. Frontier is rated at one and a half exaflops. El Capitan is two exaflops. It sounds deeply impressive. It's to simulate nuclear explosions. So America doesn't need to go around letting off nuclear warheads. They can just do it within the confines of a computer. The idea that AMD is going from strength to strength with supercomputers, as well as so many other areas, is very positive. Let us rattle through the highlights of what Lisa Su and her colleagues were discussing recently in the financials. So, for example, the total addressable market for computers is $32 billion, and Zen, as far as they're concerned, can take a chunk out of every single area of that market. And they quite correctly claim a top to bottom leadership product stack, which is the sort of marketing speak we don't usually like. But the fact of the matter is, if they can deliver in laptops, it's completely true. I mean, clearly mobile phones are a whole separate area, but in the uh, computer world, AMD is going well. Clearly, the world's fastest 16 core processor, world's fastest high end desktop processors, i.e., Threadripper, completely true. World's fastest ultra thin notebook processor, that's a bold claim. We're going to know more about that in the near future, I sincerely hope. Frontier will be shipping to the Oak Ridge National Laboratory, rated at one and a half exaflops. And then we have El Capitan, rated at two exaflops. That's going to Lawrence Livermore, also AMD Epic also Radian Instinct, but new Epic and newer Instinct. The Frontier system is rated at 30 megawatts of power. El Capitan is less than 40 megawatts of power, i.e. an awful lot of cabinets, an awful lot of liquid cooling. The details of Genoa and Zen 4 are interesting. Now, AMD wasn't saying, frankly, anything much about them, apart from the fact that El Capitan will use Zen 4. However, the way that the processor is connected to the graphics, that is interesting to me. So the graphics Radeon Instinct are going to use next gen high bandwidth memory. And then we have Infinity Architecture. 
This is the next generation of Infinity Fabric, and the idea is to connect one CPU with multiple GPUs. They're showing four in the image. There's been some debate whether this is socketed graphics, uh, i.e. laid out literally as you see it on the slide, CPU in the center, and then graphics at each corner, or whether that's just a topography thing, and it would actually be regular PCI Express graphics cards. It also seems quite clear that uh, Infinity Architecture will be based on PCI Express 5, i.e. it will have a wicked amount of bandwidth. And then we see the roadmap, which starts at 2017 and goes out to 2022. On the CPU front, we've got Zen 3 on 7 nanometer, Zen 4 on 5 nanometer, GPUs, 7 nanometer for RDNA 2, advanced node for RDNA 3. What exactly that means remains to be seen. The feeling seems to be it might be EUV 7 nanometer rather than 5 nanometer. And this is something I think we're going to see a lot of from AMD in the near future, which is they're going to use different technologies for different products. So there might well be different Zen 3s or Zen 4s, different processes used in different areas in the similar way to the fact that the Ryzen 4000 laptop chips, for example, are Zen 2 with Vega graphics rather than Zen 2 with Navi graphics. They, they have lots of modules they can mix and match. One thing that is truly fascinating about AMD at the moment is that we've heard word from Intel about their packaging Fovros and such like. AMD just seems to be getting on with it. Their 2.5D and 3D stacking seems to be absolutely key to what they're going to be doing over the next few years. And the interconnect, as we know, Infinity Fabric, Infinity Architecture, is just stellar. Their interconnect is something that has allowed AMD to move the goalposts quite radically. So that slide, advanced technology and uh, with the packaging and interconnect, might on the face of it look dull, but it is so, so, so important. Significant AMD PC growth. I mean, look at those charts of them going up. Now, of course, plus percentages. I mean, it depends where you're coming from. And the fact is, in most instances, AMD is coming from a very low base. In laptops, you know, they are almost nowhere. With servers, AMD started from essentially zero. So they need to move up significantly year on year on year. But AMD is doing it. Third gen AMD Ryzen Mobile. We want to see these. We do, we do, we do. Pass those Zen 2 laptops, please. The market here potentially for AMD is absolutely enormous. They know it. They want to supply the chips. We want to see the laptops. This is simply them pushing at a semi-open door. We are waiting here with open arms. Give it to us, AMD, please, just as soon as you can. We understand the problems. We want to see those laptops. Graphics. RX 5000, both the 5600 and 5700, they're perfectly okay. We like them well enough. The graphics do not use PCI Express 4 to any extent. 7 nanometer, yeah, sure. What we want is big Navi, and everybody absolutely knows it. The GPU roadmap with RDNA 2, followed by Navi 2X and then Navi 3X, which we're taking to be a kind of claim of doubling and then trebling of performance, well, fair enough. CPUs, you look at the ticks. They've delivered Zen and then Zen Plus. They've delivered Zen 2, haven't they just? Zen 3, we are expecting to see late this year, and then Zen 4 following on. What will be in Zen 3? It's been called a new architecture, but it doesn't feel like it's likely. Not in any way because AMD is resting on its laurels. They're doing nothing of the sort. But surely they haven't had time to come up with a new architecture and we're expecting on the desktop in particular that Zen 3 is going to drop into AM4, socket AM4 therefore it's going to have to use DDR4 memory if AMD does much more with Zen 3 on the 7 nanometer process beyond sorting out uh, the cache for the uh, two uh, chiplet dies then they will have done something very clever indeed. If Zen 3 is new architecture, that would be truly remarkable. Right now, if Zen 3 arrives in 2020 and is a healthy percentage better than Zen 2, that'll do more than nicely, thank you very much. Leading edge foundry process technology, I mean, this is TSMC versus Intel. In that uh, fireside chat, um, George Davis had nothing good to say about Intel's process or nothing that could be actually verified with facts. Right now, nobody believes that TSMC isn't doing a much better job than Intel. 
that's all there is to it. Infinity architecture. This is of passing interest to me. This is clearly hugely important for servers where you get to G uh, CPUs talking to multiple GPUs. On the desktop, we simply don't do this. I don't think this has any relation to, for example, some sort of clever APU where you could have multiple uh, graphics chips and then you could plug them together and make them into one big graphics chip. At the moment, it seems that graphics chips need to be... Uh, monolithic uh, i don't think the chiplet approach is going to work with graphics at the moment i mean perhaps with super fast infinity architecture they can indeed cobble together a big gpu from some small gpus but right now i'm taking this as being its server territory it's epic just as they say and it doesn't apply to our world look at the server cpu map We've got obviously Zen and Zen 2 have been delivered and are going great guns. They have enabled uh, AMD to start competing with Intel. Intel has responded by slashing the prices of various of its Xeons. You don't now pay a sort of massive premium to have uh, extra access to your system memory. Zen 3 on 7 nanometer Milan is due. Not sure if that's going to be either late this year or early next year on the server side of things. You would think it's going to be this year because the servers are of critical importance to AMD. You would think it's going to be a drop in replacement part for the existing uh, server chips. And then they move on before 2022 to Zen 4, 5 nanometer and Genoa, which is the chip being used in El Capitan. Looking forward to seeing what they do there. Not expecting to see with uh, Milan any increase in core count. Five nanometer on the other hand. Are they going to be able to cram yet more cores into a single processor? It has to be possible. They'll be freeing up an awful lot of die space. Or they might do something more dramatic with the uh, 64 cores and something else going into that space. And the final slide I've selected is showing that AMD is indeed serious about absolutely everything. Uh, the the main point here is sitting here right now it feels entirely natural to kick at intel and to say well of course amd is going to do this thing if you rewind four years for sure maybe three years even possibly two years there'd be much more skepticism in my voice as things stand my confidence levels over amd are huge i will even go so far as to say I'm starting to like the name Epic and I've for the past few years been hating that name and the reason I'm starting to like it, the spelling still winds me up, is because it lives up to its name. Give it time, the situation changes. Looking up the road, there have been some rumours and I'm feeling I'm feeling optimistic they might be correct. You will recall that there was a rumour about a different Threadripper 3000 with 8 channel DDR4. One rumour is that AMD is indeed going to deliver that part. So Zen 2 architecture, Threadripper presumably going up to 64 cores, 8 channel DDR4, colossal amount of bandwidth, colossal amount of I.O. It's not something that I need. I'm not sure it's something, well, it's not something I'll buy, that's for certain. The fact that AMD might be able to do this thing, well, of course they can do it. They've got all the components on the shelf. It's just a question of assembling them and then getting them out the door. It is absolutely something they can do. The question is whether they will or will not do it and whether the market is there for it. That I like the sound of just because it's a thing that should exist. Zen 3... The, when this was uh, set to be launched in 2020 before the human malware thing that seemed optimistic uh, fast almost unnecessary because of course their competition is just you know knackered at the moment and at the moment it feels as though zen 3 in various forms because there will be different markets certainly the desktop and certainly server for two and then a high-end desktop will be coming along uh, presumably after the fact and then you have to consider it rolls into apus and such like so it feels like we're going to see some zen 3 at the end of this year and then more zen 3 early 2021 i do not expect zen 3 to be a significant change from zen 2. don't forget in all this we've also got console launches for this christmas i mean that's uh, an awful lot of playstations and xboxes and they've all got amd hardware to the gills and then after that we've got zen 4. now we've seen roadmaps that say uh five nanometer presumably that relates to the chiplets 
the uh, other half of the uh, rumors attached to Zen 4 is that the IO die will shrink to 7 nanometer. That would free up a huge amount of space inside Zen 4. Now, whether they use that space to allow the thing to get hotter and go faster, or whether they cram in more cores, who knows? Right now, AMD has such a monumental lead over Intel that it's not fair to say they can do anything they like, but they need to offer stuff to the customers that mean the customers just go, of course I'm buying AMD. Why would I even consider Intel? And the idea I'd say that four years ago, quite absurd. I wonder whether Zen 4 is going to run on DDR5. It feels like it should be the correct time, which then means on the desktop we'll be moving on from AM4 to a new socket, and that's surely got to be long overdue. So we've got a fascinating year in hand, despite all the misery that's going around the planet. Uh, next year, that's got to be good. I mean, next year should just be a bun fight for the consumer. There should be products coming uh, unless something you know particularly terrible happens on the illness front. We should see next year price war galore because Intel has cash like you wouldn't believe. They're not stupid people. They can see what's coming and they're going to have to respond. And the worst case scenario for us is that there's a massive price war. The best case scenario is that Intel actually returns with decent products, at which point we've got proper competition. Either way, apart from the illness side of things, it sounds like the consumer has got some wonderful things coming our way. Uh, fingers crossed about Computex, not feeling confident. AMD, thank you so much for actually giving me some good news to put across because in other respects it's a fairly miserable time if you like this video give it a thumbs up hit the bell button subscribe head over to teespring buy some merch i'm leo water for kit guru and this has been a leo says